me. <laughs> Hi, John Gregor from Cold Snap Photography with more tips and tutorials. Today I'm here with Christian Dahlbeck. I've gotten a lot of requests for how we do the spinning wool and I brought uh, master wool spinner Christian Dahlbeck in to the studio here to explain some of the tips here on spinning wool. Beginning master. The beginning master? Yeah. Jamie Reibold is the old master? I would say so. Okay. Well, Jamie, if you watch this, please give us a thumbs up. I'd have you here today, but um, didn't get a hold of you in time, I guess. So uh, I want to preface this with a warning that spinning wool, you're dealing with pyrotechnics. And pyrotechnics means that there's uh, fire and it's hot and anything can happen and you have to be very careful to make sure that uh, you don't hurt yourself or hurt your camera, uh, etc. So or we'll, light anything on fire you don't want to light. <laughs> that's correct. So where you choose to spin wool should be selected carefully so that you're not going to start a fire, particularly if it's during the dry season. But, uh, so Christian, tell us what you've got. You've got some of the tools here. Maybe you can uh, show us what you've got and, and uh, explain how you put it together. This is pretty a crude setup, but it's a egg beater or whisk, and it's tied onto a rope. And this is actually a drumstick. You could use anything. And it's got a little keychain uh, ring there and the rope in between. And the keychain ring helps it spin this, better? This is kind of a... Just keeps it spinning. Okay. Without binding up. Cool. See yeah, see, turn. can you give us a whip with it just to to show? All right. That way, uh, with it being able to spin like that, you can keep this centered and get a perfect circle somewhat with your rotation. Okay, you've got your device. What do you put into the egg beater? Uh, into the egg beater, we use steel wool, and you can get that at any uh, hardware store or convenience store I'm sure. I've heard that fine works better if it's a finer steel wool. Is I that... would think so. It would bounce better once it's flying. bounces on the ground. Okay. It's more sparks. How much do you put in there? I would like pull it apart loosely and just enough to fill that little void and you can stick it right in there. Okay. We'll give a close-up on this a little in a little bit. And once it's in there, I don't know, you got to light it and you're going to want to use a torch of some sort. A regular Bic lighter or such wouldn't probably be enough to feel the temperature to get that going. So what I do is I use this, it's a little pen torch, but you can get lighters that are torches and you would heat it up. Not in here, please. <laughs> no, we're not going to do it inside. You can heat it up to where it's glowing red and hit it pretty good. And then once it starts spinning, it creates the, the combustion with the air moving through it. And that's when it starts to ignite and fly all over the place. Okay, cool. What about putting something else in there, like a little LED light source or something? Can you yeah, do that? Yeah, I did that. I have uh, took a headlamp took uh, the band off it and put it in there and then uh, spun the light and that creates to where you can make an orb or such a, any kind of thing you can think of. You could walk around with the light spinning and kind of make a, a spiral towards the camera if you wanted. Cool. You could probably gel that thing too and get different colors, I would Yeah, imagine. you could. Or find different colored lights and stick in there too. All kinds of fun you can have with this stuff. Whatever you think of with light and a long exposure, you can make anything. Cool. Well, we're going to show you some examples and we'll talk about placement and uh, landscape and things like that too. But please remember, pyrotechnics can be very dangerous, used with extreme caution. The other night I had a chance to go out with Christian and do a little wool spinning uh, out on location. So I wanted to share some of those images with you and talk just a little bit about how we set up to do the wool spinning. I'm going to show you three different images um, shot in a couple different locations 
I want you to notice that we selected a location where there was little risk of fire with about three feet of snow on the ground and the lake. We don't have to worry too much about things uh, catching on fire. Also, you want to make sure that uh, preferably you're doing it on your own property or you have permission from the property owner or you check your local regulations for the use of pyrotechnics. Make sure that you set the camera up far enough away where you are not going to be affected by the flying sparks. The only person that should be close by is the person that's doing the wool spinning and they have protective clothing on. The way that you spin, the, uh, the, the way you twirl the rope has to do with the shape of the shower of sparks that you see there. The overall exposure on these ranges from about one minute to two minutes. A good starting place would be about 30 seconds to a minute at ISO 400 with an f-stop around 5.6 or six, uh, about a third of the stop down 6.3 in this case. In this case these images were made at ISO 400 for about a minute at f6.3 uh, which is a good starting point. You may have to do some experimentation depending on how much ambient light is uh, left around. I want, and with these I wanted to capture enough of the ambient light that we could uh, see the um, the sky and some of the surroundings. You'll notice that Christian twirled these in, a, in different ways to get different effects. The first one was sort of a flat over the head twirl where the sh sparks kind of showered down around him. This was a more of an upright twirl so they, uh, the sparks flew further and uh, here he did kind of a combination of both. Okay, uh, Christian's going to demonstrate how he puts the steel wool into the beater. So if you could uh, just show us what you do with that little bit of steel wool. I would take the steel wool and pull it apart a little so that you can kind of make some more of an air bubbles in there, I would say. And then um, you can see how hot this thing has got. It has bent itself and turned black. And then I just spread it apart there and get it in there and make sure it's all closed in so it's pretty tight. It's not going anywhere until it lights on fire. Okay, and uh, how do you light it? I use this little torch right here. This is a this can be used for many things. It has soldering tips and all kinds of other multi-purpose things, but I got it on a little mini blowtorch. The only inconvenience here is I got to use another lighter for this, but it works really good. It gets pretty hot. What about safety, Christian? What do you do as far as trying to protect yourself? You got all this flying fire going on, and you're right yeah. in the epicenter of it. It could probably burn an eyeball out, yeah. or put one at least one out. And then you'd wear a patch the rest of your life. <laughs> See, your mother always warned you, you're going to put somebody's eye out doing I that. would use, uh, these are dark safety glasses, but I would definitely wear some type of clear glass or a yellow glass, like driving glasses or shooting glasses, they call them. And then another thing to, to do is probably wear some type of a canvas jacket, not something that's uh, polyester that would, once it lit on fire, it would burn. Probably not something like fleece or something you want to cover your hair. Yeah, you want something well covered so that those sparks don't catch anything. And then another thing too is wearing a dark color helps if you don't want to see you so much in the shot. Good point. Thanks. Thanks. All right, hold on. Hold on. We're going to do one more. We're going to do one more. <clears throat> All right, this is like number five here. And please don't text and spin wool at the same time. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I want to thank my good friend Christian for coming in and giving us these tips on how to spin wool safely. Thanks a lot, Christian. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. See you out in the field. Yes, I'll be there.